Hi and welcome back. Now in this chapter, we're actually going to see a demo of the cross account role access. So before we go ahead, I want to tell you what we're going to do in this demo. So we're going to have two AWS accounts. So we're going to use the primary account we've been using this entire course. Let's assume this is our production account in an organization. I then have another AWS account created and let's assume this is a development account. So the scenario of what we're trying to implement here is that we have a developer who will be in our developer account. So it will be an IM user in that account. Now that developer wants to have access to an S3 bucket that's in the production account. So instead of creating that same user in the production account, what we are going to do is that we're going to create a cross account role so that the developer from the development AWS account can access the S3 bucket in the production account. So this is the scenario we're going to implement. Let's look at the steps. So first, obviously we're going to create a developer in the development account. We'll name it developer A. We'll then attach it to a group. So we'll create a new group for this. We need to ensure that we have the account ID for the development account because this is required when we create the role in the production account. So remember that the user is in the development account. The S3 bucket is in the production account. The role that we need to create has to be in the production account. That role will have access to the S3 bucket. The developer will then assume this role to access the S3 bucket. So I hope you understand that entire process or the entire architecture of how cross account works. So we log into our production account. We'll create a bucket which will be given access to the development account. We'll create a custom policy so that only access is given to this particular bucket. That policy will then be attached to this cross account role. Then we'll create our cross account role. We have to ensure we get the ARN of this cross account role because when we go to the development account has an admin, we need to ensure that we create a policy to the development group, which will have the ability to switch roles. So when we do that, we need to have that ARN. And when we go through the demo step by step, you'll actually understand. And once we complete the demo, if you need to come back to the slides, please do. Because sometimes this can be kind of a confusing process. So if you need to do it multiple times, please go ahead. Because once you get this uh, done, you know, a couple of times, you will be able to understand how cross account role works. And then finally, we're going to log in as a developer onto the console. We'll switch the roles and then you can access that S3 bucket. So let's now go ahead to our console and implement the necessary steps. So here we are at the login screen. So first we are going to log in to the development account in AWS. So let's give a new account ID. So I've signed in as the admin of the developer account. So I'm assuming this is our developer account. So first thing we're going to do is that we're going to go to security credentials, create the user and create the group. So we're going to go on to users. We're going to click on add user. Let's give the username developer A. If you, if you want, you can give both access to this AWS account. We'll give a custom password. I don't want this user to create a new password at sign in. We'll click on next permissions. Now remember this permissions for this developer is only for this account. This permissions is not 
for the cross account role so when you're giving permissions to a user we've seen this in earlier chapters you're actually giving this permissions to the user for this development account so if you want you can actually attach existing policy so if you want this developer to have full s3 access remember this will be s3 access for the current developer account and not for the production account let's click on next review and finally create your user so remember you don't have to attach a policy for this user i just said give an example that when you attach a policy it's only applicable to this current account i finally going to click on create user so now that our user has been created i'll click on close i'll go to groups i'll create a new group so i'll just name this simple developer group click on next step i don't attach a policy at the moment and i'll just create the group if you want we can add a user to this group and let's add a developer a user click on add users so now we have our group and we have the user added to the group so i said the next thing is to ensure that we have the account number so you can go on to my account on the right hand side and finally make a note of the account number so that's it from the developer account we've created the user we've created the group we've made a note of the account id now let's sign out and go to our account which is going to act as a production account so i'm again going to sign into the console but this time instead of logging into a developer account i'm going to sign into a different account So I'm saying let's assume this is our production account in AWS. So let me complete the login process. So now I've logged into the production account. The next step, let's create a sample S3 bucket. So now that we are in S3, we can create a new bucket. So let's name this app 345 and let's just click on a quick create so now that we have a bucket created let's now go on ahead and create a cross account role so i'm going to go back to my security credentials now what we are also going to do is that we are going to create a policy this will be a custom policy which will be attached to the cross account role which will have access to that s3 bucket which we just created so let's create a policy let's create our own policy let's give a name of cross account s3 policy in the policy i am going to attach these statements so the first statement is required so the user should be able to list all buckets and then within s3 they should be able to list the bucket that's app 345 and they should be able to get put and delete an object in that particular bucket so this is the policy that's going to be attached to the cross account role next let's go ahead and create the policy so now that our policy is done let's go ahead and create our cross account role so let's click on create new role now we've done this roles before where we've actually attached a role to an amazon ec2 instance but this time you can see the option over here for role for cross account access click this so you need to choose the one that's provide access between aws accounts that you own so let's select that so this is now the account id of the development account and this is why you need to ensure that you keep the account number of the development account handy so i'm going to add the account id we don't require mfa at this point in time i'm going to click on next step now i'm going to attach the policy which we just created cross account s3 policy click on next step 
we can give the role a name so let's click on developer cross account and then you can click on create the role so now the role has been created this is our developer cross account role now just make a note of this ARR number so now when you go to development account you're going to create an inline policy that allows the developer group to assume this role and we can do that by first taking the ARN in this production account so let's so make sure you keep a note of this the ARN so if you go to the trust relationships you can see that there's a trusted entity and that's the development account number so this role which we have created in the production account has the development account has a trusted entity so now that we've done this so we've now created our policy which has access to the s3 bucket and we've created our cross account role now let's again log out log into the development account has the admin so i'm going to log out i'm going to sign into the console but this time I'm going to log in as the development account. So now we've logged in. Now we need to go to our group. So let's go to our groups. In our group, let's choose our developer group. Let's go on to permissions and let's create an inline policy. Now, an inline policy is different from a managed policy in the fact that inline policies are only applicable to the entity you attach it to. Now, when you have managed policies, managed policies is across the entire account. So you can attach the managed policy to a user, to multiple groups and when you change the managed policy, it's applicable to all the groups. But if you want to create a policy that's only specific for that particular group, then you can create an inline policy. So when you change that inline policy, it will only change for or applicable for that particular group. So let's click on a new inline policy. Let's click on the custom policy and click on select. So let's give the policy name cross account. And let's attach this policy document. So this policy document saying that this group is allowed to assume roles, right? So we've created a cross account role, which can be assumed in the production account. So this policy is saying the effect is allow. The action is that you can assume a role using the secure token service. And the resource over here, remember, is the ARN which we got of the cross account role which we created in the production account so let's go ahead and apply this policy so now we have the policy in place so now we're going to log out and log in as our developer user on to this development account in order to get this done we need to go back to the dashboard and we need to ensure that you have this console link so let's go ahead and sign out I'm not going to log into the console link. I am going to log on as the developer. So now I've logged in as the developer in the development account. Now, obviously, you will be able to access the resources based on what are the permissions. So, since we are allowed, remember S3 full access in this development account try to understand the difference that developer will able to see all the buckets in that region so currently there is no bucket defined so they cannot see anything but if they go to a service like ec2 this is just like a normal im users and groups in a particular account so if you go to the ec2 management console they should not be authorized to use anything but now what the developer wants to do they want to access a resource in the production account now, if you go on to the right hand side, you will now see the option to switch a role. So let's click on this. 
So remember, this is coming from the inline policy, which is attached to the group, which the user is a part of. So now we click on switch role. You need to provide the account ID of the production account and the role name. If you want to get the account number and the role name, remember this is in the ARN which you copied from the production account cross account role. So you can just take the account number from there, the role from there and keep it over here. You can assign a color and you can give a name if required. And then you can click on switch role. So now what's happening is that you are actually logging in to the production account has the developer. You can see it over here. So this is the account number of the production account. This is the uh, the cross account role we created. And you can see that you again have no, uh, you cannot see the EC2 resources, but let's go on to S3. Remember in the development account, we had no buckets in S3. But now if you click on S3 over here, you will see the buckets in the production account. So now the developer has actually logged into the production account without the need of actually entering username and password. They have used a cross account role which has been created, assumed permissions to access this bucket. So if you like go on to AWS Tutorial 3045 to which they don't have access, remember now the policy is kicking in saying that this developer, even though they have logged into the production account using the cross account role, there is a particular policy assigned to that group. So they can only access, remember, our app 345 bucket. So let's click on the app 345 bucket. And you can see that they have access to this bucket. So this kind of seems like a lengthy process and I urge everyone to go through this process again understand how the process works. This is a secure way. This does not have any maintenance over it as well. So you don't need to create, remember having cross account role negates the need of having multiple users, both in development and production account. So you don't need to maintain a user in both accounts just because they need access to resource in both accounts. So I said before, go through this again, the cross account role access. When you see it for the first time, it can seem like quite a lengthy process, but believe me, once you go through it a couple of times, you will understand the entire process. So this marks the end of this chapter on seeing the demo on cross account role.